It's beer o'clock on Real Ale Craft Beer. Today we've got a beer from Fuller's Brewery in London and it's one of their past masters series. This is a 1909 pale ale. So what Fuller's do, I love the thought of this, the idea of this. First of all, there's the bottle cap. What Fuller's do is that they, they have old log books from recipes of old. Ooh. Quick with that one. So this recipe comes from 1909. They've dug through their log books, Fuller's, gone through their history books, and they've produced this past master's 1909 pale ale. That's 8%, 8% ABV. You can tell this was brewed before the war, don't you? Because uh, it's 8% ABV. No rationing needed in 1909. Brilliant. The beer was kindly sent to us by Scott Wolger. Thank you very much, Scott. You've been a, a fantastic sender to the channel the last month or so. We've been having some fantastic kind of Marston's beers from you and Fuller's beers, and it's all been wonderful. Thank you very much, Scott, for the contribution to the channel. Uh, into the beer, then we got a one finger white head, good levels of carbonation. It's an amber colored ale with a slight haze to it. Anybody would think it was the year 2000, but it's 1909 in this beer's book. That smells fantastic. That smells really, really desserty, like a, like a lemon meringue pie or It's amazing, isn't it? It's amazing. I mean, I mean, for for all the wonderful breweries that are out there today, the Cloud Waters, the Verdants, the the Magic Rocks, and 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 everybody else out there that I haven't I haven't mentioned, all the wonderful brewers out there that produce wonderfully hoppy beers. I'm drinking beer from a recipe from 1909. And it's one of the most floral, hoppy beers that I've ever got my hands on. But it's mixed with wonderful malts as well. There's a lovely kind of biscuitiness coming through. To go with that lovely perfume, kind of flowery, lemony aroma. Let's dive in. Cheers, everybody. <sighs> That's going to take a bit of work around the gums. I'm going to take a couple of sips of this before I, I start chucking flavours at you. First thing you get from the beer is, I hold the beer in my mouth just to just to get all of the flavours from the beer. You get this kind of carbonation that's kind of just ripping you know, the inside, you have like a fizzing that's going on inside the in, inside of the mouth. And then you get this great big kind of multi build coming through of, of biscuits and bread and baguettes and wafer flavours. And then it goes over to being kind of jammy and tart like and plum like with with spices and pepperiness and and a slight kind of pruney plummy flavor on the back end and then bitterness so sweetness right at the beginning with that carbonation followed by a, a really balanced bitterness on the back end and that's from an eight percent parallel from 1909 they i mean okay we've been brewing beer for thousands of years in this in this country 
it's amazing then that, that over that time, over that development, it was balance become very important to breweries and to palates, to people's drinking styles. They wanted to drink something balanced and, and lovely and sweet. I was just concentrating on, on getting this pour right. So I'll tell you a quick story, because um, I got a funny feeling this was produced by John Keeling. Um, I would love to know a date to when this beer has been or was first produced. Um, it's a little bit battered on the back. It's a little bit battered on the front. I'm just wondering the age on this beer. Um, maybe if we look for a sahi, if we find a sahi on here, then, then we know it's made by... It's a relatively new beer. No, it's before the Asahi days because there's no Asahi on the label. Right, so so let me be very quick with my story. Back in 2011, I did my very first judging competition. Or one, of, one of the first for camera. I did, I did a few for Seba before, um, but I did a judging competition for the Great Welsh Beer and Cider Festival with camera in Cardiff. And there was a very knowledgeable guy across the table. And when you do ju judging competitions, there's always one guy that leads the table. He won't tell you what to mark. He won't give you, he won't say, give that a nine or a 10 or whatever for aroma or style. He won't, he, he won't kind of like push you into numbers, but he'll direct you. I think, because it was one of my first judging competitions for camera, I think maybe somebody had a little word in his ear and said, you know, will you control the table a little bit? Because it was me and my wife and a few other people judging. It was a journalist and a few other people judging this, this, this competition uh, for camera. For the national, the, 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 the champion beer of Wales back in 2011. So we judged together, really knowledgeable guy. And then we had a chat after. We had a beer together, we had a chat and I was talking about my excitement with the, the new IPAs and the pale ales and everything so hoppy. And I think Tiny Rebel had their ice cream van, maybe? It was like maybe the year before, I can't quite remember. But everybody was, throw I think it was Otley. Otley Brewing Company back in the day were throwing out some really kind of hoppy beer. And he said to me, while well, we're drinking this hoppy beer, this has all happened before, Simon, he said. This, this craft revolution, this hoppy revolution, people seem to think it's a new thing, but it's all happened before. We've been here before, he was telling me. So as this was on his mind, I think he'd come up with the idea, not there and then, but it's something that, that grew in his mind over time, to have this past Masters series, to go through the logbooks and to find Fuller's versions of, of really hoppy beer. And this is what he... This is what he's created from the from from the the old logbook from 1909. Is a hoppy, well balanced, eight percent ABV pale ale. We've been here before. It's fantastic as well. Fantastic, a real fantastic beer. Thank you very much for to Scott for sending me the beer. Probably one of the last beers I will review before the Asahi purchase. So since 1845, the recipe of every beer brewed at the Griffin Brewery has been handwritten in the Fuller's Brewing Books. The past Masters series, there's a lot of damage on the back of the label, sorry, um, is a glimpse into our unique brewing history, recycling, or sorry, recreating authentic beers from this rich recipe 1909 pale ale i'll be very quick uh is the 10th beer in the series and our first recreation of this popular style darker than pale ales we have uh, come to know this recipe combines treacle and sugar with malted barley golden tops 
and the signature Fuller's Yeast for a smooth, well-balanced and truly fruity beer at the brewery, sorry, as the beer is bottle conditioned, a natural sediment will form. Store upright, pour carefully and enjoy. Fabulous, fabulous stuff. I'm going to rate it. I like that. I really like that. I like the concept. I like the idea. It tastes good. It smells good. It looks good. Fuller's Brewery, for me, always one eye towards producing quality beer. It's never been about lowest common denominator, just throwing out rubbish beer. It's always been about quality with Fuller's, and I think they grew their pub estate and the size of the brewery over the years on quality beer. I like Fuller's, I like what they stand for. I hope it continues under the Asahi purchase. For me, that is all day long a 9 out of 10. So 9 out of 10 from Real Ale Craft Beer. Please put your comments in the comments box. Subscribe to our daily beer and food reviews. Give us a big fat thumbs up. Boom! Cheers.